This program is brought to you by Dolku Media. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. With award-winning journalist Madin Mor. Absolutely. Honorable Achim, as you can see, the ideas of the initiatives are merit. The July, uh, on July 8th, uh, the clashes in J1 took place, we were very unfortunate. Including uh, country-specific ones, uh, which uh, and the rebellion continue, continue to be. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingwar. This week we sit down for a special interview with the outgoing Japanese ambassador to South Sudan, His Excellency Kia Masahiko. Masahiko became the country's top diplomat to the country since March 2015. As the ambassador's tour of duty ends in South Sudan, we ask him about the projects and activities of the Japan International Cooperation Agency, best known as JICA. Is JICA a good idea for fixing the nation? In our second installment, we will also speak about Japan's five-year UN peacekeeping operation, as well as touch on the broader Japanese footprints in the Republic of South Sudan. Mr. Ambassador, we are honored to welcome you to this program. How are you? Yes, we're fine. Nice meeting you. Welcome to the show. So your principal development agency, JICA, yes. has been running series of projects and activities since 2012. These are linked to the building of the economy, social infrastructure, development of alternative industries, livelihoods, governance, and security. Put JICA into perspective for us. Yes. Yeah, let me first say that uh, JICA has been active in South Sudan or then Southern Sudan since 2005. So uh, even before independence. And uh, JICA has uh, been just uh, one conclusion. JICA is uh, the one of the solutions for fixing that nation. So, okay. So let's explore yes, your solution for indeed. fixing South Sudan. Mm -hmm. Where would you like to start? Well, uh, it's a partnership. The JICA's approach is to listen to the South Sudanese and support South Sudanese initiatives. So the maybe different from some uh, of the supporters' uh, approach, just uh, work out the good uh, uh, some uh, prescription from outside. Say one side fits all. Oh, this is a good idea, so please take it. That's not JICA's approach. JICA's approach, the first and foremost, is to support the recipients' self-help and self-reliance, and respecting the initiatives and capacity of the recipients, in this case, South Sudan. It is development-oriented. Development-oriented, of course, addressing humanitarian needs on the ground when necessary. Okay, so let's talk about some of the major projects that JICA has been financing in South Sudan. Uh, we have the Freedom Bridge, yes. we have the Water Supply, yes. and many, many, many projects. So uh, tell us about those. Yes, uh, let's start from uh, the most visible uh, one, uh, that's the Freedom Bridge. So the, the, the work started uh, the concrete work on the ground started just before I came here. Uh, that start, uh, started in uh, uh, March 2015, and that uh, uh, two years ago. And then the work I made constant progress up until uh, the incident in July 2016, and it's still uh, uh, depending, uh, which is a pity at the moment. But uh, the point is. That, uh, that the support uh, started long before the actual uh, start of the work on the ground. It needs first the consultations, it needs 
uh, study, it needs a request and uh, preparation. So all those uh, uh, preliminary work uh, started long before uh, March 2015. And uh, I must say that uh, infrastructure is one of the key components, especially quality infrastructure, addressing the real need of the people. That is our strong attachment in extending development assistance. So these projects uh, that have been running, yes. they had to stop in 2016, as you alluded to, mm -hmm. uh, following the J1 clashes. Indeed. So insecurity was a big factor. Indeed. Why have they not resumed after the violence subsided in Juba? Violence, uh, for the time being, uh, subsided. But uh, the security situation in Juba and in the country is very difficult to predict. Even this year, um, there have been uh, uh, some cases of concern where even Juba, the some uh, uh, greater insecurity could uh, uh, resume. Say, I saw last year, I think in, in October, there was an incident where some rumor uh, went around and then the, the Say the senior leadership of the government went round in open car. That <laughs> happened, and then uh, uh, the some uh, military uh, change of leadership. Maybe another concern which uh, took place uh, uh, this year, and uh, so the of course uh, I'm not uh, talking. I'm not really uh, fueling the concern, and uh, the I commend the government and the people, especially the security organs of. South Sudan, uh, jointly uh, working very hard to improve security in Juba, especially uh, since the end of last year, on Christmas time, it was uh, the leadership's initiative to ensure security in Juba, and I hope that it's uh, steadily making uh, fruits. So your uh, main concern is political instability and uncertainty, to be precise. But there was a lot of politics uh, that ensued following that conflict. Most of the development partners uh, withdrew the support to UNDP development programs. And was that part of the pressure from Troika for Japan to pull out because some people said you are propping up the regime? Was that the calculation? Not at all. I, I reassure you that that's not the concern. That's not the reason. We evacuated simply because of our concern for security. We need to ensure this, the uh, safety of the Japanese nationals that was working on the project, as well as all those uh, people working on the ground. So that is a concern. And then uh, uh, the uh, we uh, it is not that we are doing nothing. We have been working on this, and I observe the constant improvement despite uh, uh, severe economic difficulties, which is another concern as a matter of fact. But uh, despite the uh, continuing economic concern and uh, accompanying uh, security uh, concerns uh, in Juba, uh, the, as far as the uh, fighting among parties are concerned, it's not, uh, does not likely to be taking place in the near future. So we take that seriously. And uh, it was only last month, in August, that uh, for the very first time since uh, July last year, the tripartite team of the cabinet office, foreign ministry, and JICA came over. And they, came all, they called on His Excellency the President, which was uh, very reassuring. And the JICA person was composed of two people. One is a senior vice president of JICA, the other one is uh, the acting uh, head of uh, uh, JICA South Sudan office now operating in Kampala. They are working even now. Mm -hmm. Your projects are a key component because of the nature in literally uh, fixing South Sudan or, yes. building, <laughs> or building the nation. Indeed. So the question is, what would it take uh, for the resumption? Yes. Um, we have, uh, since the very beginning, uh, just after July last year, uh, uh, we are extending, ex we are conveying uh, our message to the leadership, as the people, 
uh, on two points. For JICA to come back to resume the major infrastructure work, two things are necessary. One is uh, to ensure security in Juba, and uh, with some good assurance that it would uh, continue at least for some time so that uh, we can uh, feel secure that uh, uh, a sudden change of events will disrupt everything. The second point is uh, strengthening uh, security measures, enhanced security measures for those uh, who would, will resume the work here in Juba. So we need to uh, strengthen the security measures like vehicles, like uh, accommodation, like uh, some uh, security extended by the government. We need to really make a concrete And that discussion. is being done? The, uh, the, the current state is that uh, the, so the data uh, mission delegation came over and they inspected the three major sites for uh, infrastructure work, the Freedom Bridge, water supply, and don't forget Riverport project, which was about to start in, I think that was uh, in yeah, late July last year. But uh, so it could not uh, uh, undertake the uh, inauguration ceremony for the, 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 the groundbreaking ceremony uh, due to the incident. So the Riverport project already, it's a uh, fund is committed Exchange of notes is made, contract is made, it was about to start. So that is coming up as soon as, uh, as, soon as JICA's uh, work resumes. Is there a timeline for the res resumption of the interrupted works? No, we are working. That, no, because uh, uh, so the, I've, I've said that uh, they've come, come here and uh, they've checked three sites. They've uh, called on His Excellency uh, and they've uh, called on the uh, the government minister, and uh, they've seen the sites. They talked to uh, the other people concerned, uh, those working peace, those working partnership. So they got uh, sufficient uh, information and homework. So I'm now waiting for their addressing the homework. Is the deployment of the regional protection force going to help the process? Definitely. Definitely. So I appreciate the government's strong commitment to receive and welcome and work with the regional protection force. And I'm hoping that the government will continue to really uh, provide uh, many uh, services and become flexible so that they can work better. It, it is a domestic uh, kind of pressure because I know that uh, it would uh, be problematic if a Japanese die, dies in South Sudan. Is this part of the concern? Self-preservation? Well, I mean, the safety of the Japanese national is uh, one of the, my, the major missions that I need to address. That's also the concern of the Japanese people and the government in general. And uh, uh, one thing I've got to uh, mention in this point, that, that it was only last year in July, just uh, a short while before uh, uh, the incident erupted in Juba, there was a sad uh, incident in Dhaka, uh, Bangladesh, where Japanese uh, uh, JICA, uh, Japanese uh, aid workers attached to JICA, they were killed by terrorism. So that uh, caused huge concern and anger, even in much safer places like Bangladesh, Dhaka, that suddenly took place by terrorism. And uh, uh, we were shocked, and uh, and we, our government, renewed our strong determination to ensure the security, safety of the Japanese aid aid workers abroad. So in that, just after that, this incident happened, and all the JICA people, I mean, many foreign nationals, just evacuated. So when we come back to Juba as we've experienced that, uh, uh, that incident, we have become even much more uh, cautious in making sure that uh, nothing will happen, especially 
another fact is that uh, that was the second incident for this country. Um, I, sorry to say that uh, we we did the evacuation in December 2013, and then uh, after we come back, we did the groundbreaking ceremony, but uh, we, we are obliged to leave again. So. If you come back and if, if we face a similar challenge, then uh, I think uh, government will be criticized. Everyone wonder why you just uh, you you are accountable. You are accountable to your people. So first, so, before you are accountable to others, we have been soliciting soliciting questions on uh, from our viewers on social media, and one of the questions for you is. What is Japanese interest in South Sudan? Does Japan have an interest in South Sudan, whether economic or otherwise? Supporting peace and development in South Sudan is the interest of Japan. I'm, uh, I, I also said I, I've been saying this on many occasions. So uh, I've been here for two years and a half. Uh, there are many challenges, but uh, my work is quite simple. Uh, if we support peace and development of South Sudan, that's Japan's interest. And I'll be simply appreciative for that. The background is that uh, uh, with all the achievements Japan has made, now Japan is somehow questioned, tasked whether Japan is ready to fulfill its responsibility to contribute to world peace and prosperity. So it's world peace, which and comes the, back to you. Yes. So this when there's peace in the world, mm. you get positive outcome. Yes. But what we about economic? What about economic? Japan is a major industrial power. Yes. Why not economic interest? We have oil sector, we have mining sector, we have agricultural sector. Is that not an interest? Well, yeah, frankly speaking, um, uh, we've not gone that far because it's so challenging for us. No, and uh, uh, well, for good or bad, good for, for good for bad for us, or for good or bad for your country, uh, the well, Japanese uh, companies are uh, also very cautious. And uh, uh, so requisite they, they are not, they are not uh, quite uh, taking a huge risk. So requisite security is fundamental. Yeah, indeed. So we like to, uh, but. Uh, uh, I must emphasize that the Africa as a whole is uh, the opportunity for Japan, and uh, we are taking a somewhat a longer term. So we are not uh, just uh, focusing on uh, extracting a short term, uh, cheating gains by fooling uh, your government or some uh, uh, disguising anything, and uh, and uh, get any extract uh, any, any short term gains. Um, we are steadily improving our performance and, uh, you know, looking at the world, Africa is the last potential for development. We've Look, done a lot in Asia and now the frontier is Africa. You're looking at sustainable investment. Long-term investment. Right. And we are doing a lot in Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda. Maybe in other places like uh, uh, South Africa and Mozambique and uh, Ghana, and uh, they, we are undertaking um, region-wide development, uh, cooperation and uh, business relations. So why, yes. why don't we take a break from here? Yes. Hello, welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adin or Fixing South Sudan. Fixing South Sudan was the ideas that the liberation of the Nyanya one was not complete. Fix this nation. We talk about fixing South Sudan. It means there is something wrong about it. Yes. It is in the situation that requires fixing. You are calling for national dialogue. That means there is something wrong with South Sudan. What is wrong with South Sudan is that there is no development. There is insecurity. There is in Our struggle was to liberate ourselves from domination, to become free, to enjoy equal rights as citizens. I'm happy to join you with this uh, Fixing South Sudan program. So, we need peace. Peace in all South Sudan.
This program is brought to you by Dolku Media. Catch up with your hosts on SSBC TV every Thursday 7:30 p.m. to 8 p.m. and repeat of the same every Friday 12 noon to 12:30 p.m. and on SSBC Radio every Saturday after 7 p.m. English news and repeat of the same on Monday after 7 a.m. English news. For more information contact plus 211 9533331119 or send an email to madingor@gmail.com or else visit www.dalcomedia.com Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan your ideas for building the new nation I am Madingor and with us is his excellency Kia Masiko the outgoing Japanese ambassador we are talking about JICA as an idea for fixing South Sudan Welcome back to the show So let me get your view. 150 years ago, yes. Japan was a developing country. Indeed. And in its history, it got embroiled in wars just like South Sudan. Mm. How do you explain Japan's astronomical rise to a number two global economic uh, power position after the United States of America for a long time and most recently to number three after China? So what are the parallels and similarities in the development trajectories between the two countries? Yes. Maybe short answer is peace. So you need to ensure peace in order to achieve development. So if uh, South Sudan can promote peace, then uh, those development projects could resume and you can see many South Sudanese fulfilling their uh, responsibility and uh, uh, really unlocking the potential for the boom. But uh, uh, in addition to peace, I must say that uh, Japan and South Sudan are quite similar in the sense that uh, we, maybe with the time difference of uh, 150 years, Maybe after the independence, after the opening of the country exposed to the West or the developed uh, world, uh, we need we need to adapt to the reality of the world, the globe, and that was the challenge which uh, Japan faced 150 years ago. Uh, at that time, uh, Japan felt it was a small country. Uh, far away from the west and uh, it was mm, mm, at that time much weaker uh, economically and also more importantly militarily so they came over to knock the Japan's door with uh, with uh, frigates and, uh, so with uh, some uh, combination of military and economic power So that was a time of imperialism. And if you study history, you learn that, that in the latter half of the 19th century to the early first, the beginning of the 20th century, so many non-Western countries were colonized, ruled by the West. And Japan was one of the few countries which survived that period as an independent nation. Why? The reason is that, uh, two reasons. One is that uh, when Japan opened its doors to the Western world, we had some good preconditions which made us uh, uh, jumpstart a path to uh, economic development and military uh, build-up like other Western countries. Uh, the second reason is a cultural adaptability. We, ha we, we were flexible, we were generous, all embracing, and uh, uh, really uh, we simply uh, made use of uh, the Western technology and some institutions even. Why not destroying the inherent order, culture, and value of the existing society. So I don't want to uh, elaborate on this in detail, but just uh, mention the Japan was at the periphery 
of China. And uh, we got used to incorporating advanced ideas and uh, somehow uh, allowing them to coexist with the indigenous culture. Right. So the Western coming was uh, just a similar thing, so which we can easily adapt. So what propelled the growth of uh, Japan? Is it uh, education? Is it the skill development? Is it uh, the resources that you had in your country? Yes, all of these, uh, but uh, not quite uh, natural resources. We had hardly any natural resources. But the resources we had, and we had a good basis of agricultural production. We had a very precious uh, human resources. Uh, maybe different, uh, this is a difference from uh, South Sudan, uh, but uh, we had uh, uh, undertaken a good education right before. So there was 100%, uh, near 100% literacy, even farmers. So they could read and write. So that uh, educational basis was the basis for Japan's success, which is not quite similar to maybe this country, but the most important driver was the quality of uh, leadership in my personal view. You have known South Sudan intimately for the last two years. You have interacted with our leaders, with all aspects of our society. So what can South Sudan learn from Japan? What, are, what can we emulate your success to be succinct? The, uh, I'd like to emphasize the importance of leadership at all levels. The, you, know, you can make a difference. I mean, this do Doku is a marvelous initiative. You know, the, it's, uh, uh, so you took, the CEO took the lead in uh, uh, creating, devising this new idea and, uh, and uh, making all the partnership with the hotel, with the, the friends and uh, the, the SSPC and others. And then uh, with a uh, little additional cost, you are making a big impact and you are expanding the network. You are in this kind of conversation. You are not only uh, informing the public, but you are stimulating a person like me. Oh, this is a way. And uh, this is run led by South Sudanese. This is impressive. So um, such accumulation of uh, such individual leadership at every level, that will change the country. And that was exactly what Japan, what took place in Japan. So I said that leadership is important, but uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, to blame the very, very top leadership only. Of course, uh, you have to have a good quality leadership and uh, the president is taking a good leadership, like a national dialogue at the moment. And uh, uh, so there's such a um, good leadership at all levels uh, is the key for success. We have, South we have talked about how JICA could be an idea for fixing South Sudan because of the things that it is uh, doing for South Sudan. But there's a broader debate about whether aid is a good idea for developing nations. Mm -hmm. So, what is your view on aid? Yes. Should we continue to be beholden to JICA or at some point get out of that framework? So the most important principle of Japan's aid community, it's shared among Japanese uh, aid community, is that uh, aid for self-reliance, aid to end aid, aid to let the recipient stand on its own so that uh, no more aid is necessary. And that requires the economic growth, industrial development. Uh, otherwise, the resources will not be available. So aid so would have to be very important. Aid would have to be paced out. Yes. Let me highlight a few things. So you had your self-defense forces uh, operating in South Sudan for about, about five years maybe before it was, you know, South Sudan, in the greater Sudan. So, uh, what can you say about uh, the mission? It has ended. Yes. The, I was uh, with them for uh, more than two years, and then I, I saw them off. Uh, I must emphasize that the some state, uh, there are uh, four Japanese staff officers in armies who are still working 
in the field of, uh, of uh, uh, engineering, logistics, aviation, and intelligence. So Japanese uh, continue to support AMIS in terms of personnel. In addition to uh, financing, we are the third largest contributor to AMIS. So uh, the emphasis is, uh, got changed after five years of your country's uh, independence and our, con our country's contribution. And uh, we are now uh, gearing towards um, self-sustainable development. So that's our idea. Why did the mission end? Was it abrupt or was that logical? No, the, 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 that was decided based on the, the, uh, the uh, careful consideration by, uh, by our leadership. And uh, I must emphasize that uh, this uh, more than five years uh, dispatch of our engineering forces to uh, South Sudan armies was the, light, was the longest among all the uh, uh, contingent contribution uh, of engineering continued. And uh, so the, uh, we consider our decision was to, it was after more than five years, it was time now to uh, shift our focus on uh, supporting by sending our forces to other forms of support like human resource development, like human assistance, support for peace. So those are the uh, background thinking of our government. So Japan was drew because the political risk and also the security risk were just too great to be taken. No, the, this is uh, in response to the change of the face of this country. It is my hope and that uh, the, in deciding and announcing uh, this decision, uh, we emphasized uh, the uh, good announcement of the president uh, for the start of national dialogue. And uh, we also appreciated the, after some hesitation, I must say, the government made a, a strong commitment uh, in late uh, November last year to receive unconditionally the Regional Protection Force, which is now being deployed. So we observed that such positive development, and we decided that now we can move ahead. Hand over the responsibility. From the, from, from, uh, the uh, self forces which has served for five years, more than five years, and the other, other measures. Isn't it uh, uh, critical to say at some point, just like eight, the United Nations should not continue to babysit South Sudan forever? Yes, I think that's my understanding. The, you may remember that uh, just after the arrival of the current uh, uh, special representative of the UN Secretary General, uh, Mr. David Chair, he said clearly that the success of his mission is to uh, withdraw armies. No, the armies is here so that um, to make the condition environment for armies to withdraw. So that's what he publicly said at the very beginning of the mission, and that's my understanding. Armies is here to support the people to live a peaceful, safe life, and if, as, as uh, this country can achieve that, uh, we withdraw. You know, the, it's very costly. Jap we know because uh, we feel pain. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's cost for Japan 100. Uh, medium uh, US dollars uh, every, every year. year. And the whole mission costs about a billion. Whole yeah, yes. So let me uh, uh, briefly mm. hear about uh, Japanese support to national dialogue. Yes. You said peace, peace is absolute necessity for any development to take place. So uh, explain your support to the national dialogue. Yes, the, we are supporting the uh, inclusive, credible, 
uh, transparent national dialogue to be successful. So uh, uh, we believe that, that the initiative is very good and uh, we came here so that uh, that initiative can be a success and uh, uh, we are supporting uh, it for a number of reasons. The one is that uh, it would allow uh, various parties to come on board. So it could uh, uh, allow uh, those uh, who were somehow excluded, not quite properly uh, uh, engaged at the time of the formation of the, piece of the, the, uh, the agreement in uh, 2015, and that there are some parties who left uh, Juba last year in July. Those uh, people somehow are uh, uh, estranged with us. And uh, they could uh, come on board in this uh, national dialogue framework in a, in a good manner. Is, is that your sense that that is happening? That is uh, my hope and uh, that's what I'm calling for. So the, I'm on this occasion, taking this opportunity, I'd like to call all the parties. Uh, all South Sudanese to come on board to take part in this national dialogue uh, so that uh, uh, they could discuss through dialogue that she addressed so many things. You know, taking up arms and fight, that will simply embarrass and uh, destroy the country. So that is my belief. The second reason why uh, we are uh, supporting this uh, initiative is that uh, it is in any case ne necessary to uh, address the communal violence, the local conflicts, uh, so many uh, local uh, misunderstandings uh, exist in this country. And uh, uh, they need those, uh, say, peace agreement or some other any initiatives by politicians, they cannot address those local issues. And the third point, which is the last, is that uh, uh, this uh, national dialogue process can ensure the participation and engagement of the grassroots community and the people. So any deal at the top by any major parties, of course they can make a document, but uh, they are different from the people on the ground. So when it comes to have them implemented, some soldiers, armed groups, and young people, or some uh, dissatisfied people, they simply express uh, their dis dissatisfaction by fighting. So, so any such top level agreement, that's necessary of course, that, that needs to be supplemented at, in any case by the national dialogue. So I'd like to emphasize that the national dialogue is not a panacea. It cannot stand alone. You need to have a strong engagement from the international community, strong push and uh, uh, encouragement by the international community as well as the people from the ground to make everyone on board. In that sense, the recent, the uh, initiated the uh, EGAD revitalization forum, that is also oh, even more critical for this country. As you exit South Sudan, I'm sure you have done a great deal of reflection. What are your uh, high points, if we should say? High points? Uh, so I, I got uh, uh, good two uh, occasions. Uh, my uh, work is appreciated by the people and the government. So I got uh, uh, the honorary doctorate uh, from the University of Juba. That was a very kind gesture. Uh, that was last year in May. And uh, uh, the, my work has been appreciated by the leadership uh, publicly. Uh, but uh, say the I was uh, I got uh, um, I felt rewarded when uh, on one hand uh, I got uh, some positive uh, understanding and action by the government because uh, mm, uh, I understand that uh, uh, there are some uh, many challenges for the government, which I, I have become very sympathetic, uh, despite all the, the, the current ongoing difficulties. 
Of course, ultimately, it's a British constitution of government. So, uh, uh, I think uh, that is, uh, has been admitted. Having said that, this country... Yes, do you have any regrets? No, um, I did my best. So, the, um, the, I, I really uh, commend the recent the release of political prisoners by the leadership, and I hope that uh, it will continue if there are any other uh, uh, unlawful uh, detention of uh, any South Chinese, that uh, would be, uh, those people should be uh, uh, released to uh, pro provide a conducive environment for the national dialogue. I also commend the decision by the Cabinet Council of Ministers in November last year when, after some hesitation, the leadership decided to unconditionally receive the RPF. And I think that was uh, reconfirmed just recently by the relevant ministers in front of the diplomatic missions. So those, um, the, I felt uh, very fulfilled when uh, I had a very frank discussion uh, with the leadership and uh, the government uh, uh, moved positive, concrete steps for the benefit of the people to bring about peace. So I'm confident that the president would work further to achieve peace this year. He said that at the beginning of this year, so he will continue working so that uh, this country will bring about peace this year. Is JICA a good idea for fixing South Sudan? Yes, definitely. So, so um, for JICA to come back, I'd like to request all of you for the government. So JICA can help fix South Sudan? Yes. But, the, but you need to help JICA to help, to help South Sudan. Sudan. Because JICA is not yet back. Right. So please uh, uh, make all the efforts to make all the peace initiatives, National Dialogue, Revitalization Forum, uh, and others maybe, uh, make them successful. And, uh, and uh, please, uh, I plead the opposition groups, uh, not uh, despite the announcement of the unilateral declaration of ceasefire, the opposition groups are still calling for armed struggle. That's unreasonable. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. In, I'm not uh, partial. I'm just uh, an outsider, objectively supporting South Sudan. Just uh, reciprocate each other so that the South Sudan can reconcile and make this country peaceful. Kia Masihiko, thanks for coming on Fixing South Sudan. Can you say Fixing South Sudan? Fixing South Sudan. Ideas fixing for South Sudan. <laughs> ideas for the new nation. Ideas for the new nation. And thanks for being on Fixing South Sudan, Ideas for the New Nation, comes to you every Thursday, 7.30 p.m., SSBC. Okay.